I overheard a conversation. Someone asked a friend, when do you see yourself being happy in life? To which the other person responded, maybe at the end of this week, or maybe once I get into my universities, then I'll be successful, then I'll be happy. We hear it all the time, especially in the Silicon Valley, and it's unfortunate, but imagine instead hearing, I'm excited for tomorrow because it's a new day, or I, I, I'm happy with where I am in my life right here and right now. Does it seem out of reach? I don't think so. Now, a lot of people might already be thinking, I have too much going on at home, too much going on at school. I can't be happy right now. But it just so turns out that only 10% of one's total happiness is dependent on your circumstances. The other 90% comes from the way you interpret the world going on around you. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. Now, I'm from the Netherlands. That's where it is on a map, in case you didn't know. And the Dutch people are known as one of the happiest people in the world. Why is this? Now, like our long legs and cycling prowess, part of it is just ingrained in our DNA. But the other part comes from our relaxed mindset and the way we view the world. Have any of you guys been to the Netherlands? I can't really see, but <laughs> maybe not. There's not a lot going on there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but if you have, you've seen bikes and you've seen a lot of them. That over there is a, um, a bike parking garage. My grandma, she's 85 years old, and she still bikes to get her groceries. Exercise has great benefits for you, obviously physically, but also mentally. When you exercise, your brain realizes it as a fight or flight moment, and it releases a protein that acts as a reparative element to your memory neurons. This essentially acts as a reset switch. That's why we feel so refreshed and at ease after we exercise. And of course, we have those pain-blocking endorphins that make us feel so good and positive. And a lot of people are like, I just don't have time. I don't like exercising. But the thing is, you do have time. It just so turns out that those mental benefits come within just the first 20 minutes of exercise. 20 minutes is all it takes. You don't have to become a superstar athlete or anything. And I think that's why the Dutch have mastered it so well, because you can see people just bike to work in their full suits or with kids on the, on the bike. That over there is my little cousin and, and me on the bike. So just take 20 minutes. Try maybe biking to school for once. Or take your dog on a walk. Every day, just get outside and see the effects that it can have on you. Now, quick little history lesson. The Netherlands literally translates to low countries. That's because half of the, about half of the country is below sea level. Now, typically, life under the sea is aquatic, but we haven't grown fins yet. And that's because hundreds of years ago, farmers all had to work together in order to keep the land from flooding. Every farmer had to do their part to maintain their dike. That's what a dike is. It's, it keeps the water from flooding into the country. Everyone had to work together because if one person didn't do their part, the land would flood. And this is still incredibly prevalent today. This is a staple, this sense of community is a staple of Dutch culture today. There's this something called samenleving in Dutch, which translates to living together or community. Every day after school, all the little kids run to the playground and play soccer at the park. My grandmother is too busy to call us over here because she has so many things going on. She has so many friends. <laughs> so I can't express the importance of social interaction enough. So positive psychologist Martin Seligman studies positive psychology, and he's worked with thousands of patients across his lifetime. And he said the one thing common among every happy patient he's worked with is that they're all incredibly social. And when we feel at risk of being isolated, the pain centers in our brain are actually activated because from an evolutionary standpoint, we need people to survive. So get out there. Talk to people you maybe wouldn't talk to. And when you do, don't just engage in small talk. Try to engage in a meaningful conversation. The Dutch are notorious for being blunt and honest. When people ask, hey, how are you, instead of just responding, I'm good, and leaving it at that, it's much more common for someone to say, I'm feeling fabulous today, and this is why. Or I'm having a pretty crappy day, and here's why. Which then leads to a deeper conversation. A study at the University of Washington in St. Louis found that those who participate in deeper, more meaningful conversations are happier than those who don't. But the study concluded that any sort of conversation, no matter how trivial, was related to higher sense of happiness and well-being in the participants. So like I said, get out there. Try to engage in conversation with people you might not usually do. Prioritize your social life. Find a time in the week just to be with your friends and hang out with people. 
Tell your parents or your family about your day. Really talk to them about your day. Practice this idea of samalafing. Now, despite this strong sense of samalafing, there's actually a very little sense of competition or keeping up with the Joneses. In the Netherlands, there's this saying that goes, Du maar lekker gewoon, dat is al gek genoeg which is a mouthful, but it essentially translates to just be normal or just do you, that's crazy enough. In Holland, there's no desire or need to be the biggest, the fastest, the smartest, the most successful. When in Holland, you just do you, which is easier said than done, but there's a lot of really interesting research out there that proves why this mindset is so beneficial. When you do what you love, not what your parents love, not what your friends want to see, not what might earn you the most money down the line, but what you are good at and what you love, you experience something in psychology that's known as flow. Flow is a mental state of operation in which you're fully immersed and focused at the subject at hand. It's different than pleasure because when you experience pleasure, you know it's happening. But with flow, you're totally lost in the moment. If you do what it takes to have it all and look like you're the best, you might experience pleasure, temporary pleasure, but you won't experience that sustained happiness and life satisfaction that you do when you experience flow. Matthew Killingsworth designed a study where he studied 15,000 people and something, he found something very clear. Those who are thinking about other things other than the task at hand are significantly less happy than those who are present and focused and totally involved in what they're doing. That's why it's so important to find something to do that you love. The more your mind wanders, the less happy you are, even if your mind is wandering off to some more pleasant place. Why do you think mindfulness is such a hot topic these days in positive psychology? It's because you focus your mind, you quiet your mind, and you're not thinking about anything else. So those cheesy Facebook posts that your mom shares on Facebook about living in the moment may sound cliche, but there's a lot of truth to them. So try different things out while you're still young. Take an inter interesting elective, maybe like culinary or aerospace engineering or photography. Try not to focus on being the biggest or the best, but focus on being you and see what it does for you. Because a lot of people think that once you're successful, then you'll be happy. But actually, it's the other way around. Once your brain is positive as opposed to negative, neutral, or stressed, you are actually a lot more successful than the other way around. I mean, another thing that strikes me about the Dutch people is that we're very chill, you could say, or emotionally regulated. I've been trying something recently called the 21-day challenge that Martin, that psychologist Sean Inker recommended. Every night before bed, I take about five minutes to write down three things I'm grateful for and one positive experience. Doing this for just 21 days trains your brain to scan the world for the positive as opposed to the negative. Now, it's March, which means I, along with maybe some of you, are hearing back from a lot of universities. And I didn't get into some of my top choice schools, which I thought initially would make me really upset. But it just happened so that when I got my rejection letter, I looked at it, I said, all right, <laughs> their loss, and I moved on. And I think it's because my brain has been trained to realize that there is so much more to be positive and thankful for in this world. So try it. Try to re rewire your brain. Try this 21J challenge Te to write down at the end of the day three things that you're grateful for and one positive experience. Rewire your brain to be more emotionally regulated and positive. I was at Camp Diversity last week, and I realized I was shocked when I realized that some of the happiest people there were the same people with the most adverse backgrounds. So for those of you who are thinking, no, this isn't for me, it can. It can be. This is something that's possible for everyone. So to address those two people that I overheard the other week, don't look into the future to find happiness. Tomorrow's happiness starts today. Because the future, it's not some place, some place that we're going. It's something that we have the power to create. And I'm hoping with a little bit of Dutch influence, that place will be a happy one. Thank you.